Hello, folks. It's the Endo meeting on June 7. Um, does anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda? Uh, my hope is to just, my hope is to get to the end of this meeting with some alignment about the design of Endo um, so that we can start landing things. All right. Uh, where, sorry to uh, interrupt, where is the agenda? Uh, there's usually an agenda link attached to the invitation. Um, I believe there is for this one, but I don't have it open. We do not, uh, we have, we do not have a good track record of keeping minutes or agendas for this meeting. It's, uh, it's been mostly informal <clears throat> up to this point. Um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, something I'd be interested in looking at is the, uh, react app that, oh yeah, uh, Aaron Aaron. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's just all I wanted to mention. There's a, there's a recording of that presentation, but I don't think that we've seen the code. I'll, I'll make sure that you can find the link to the recording at least. Thanks. Uh, do we have you, Mark? Yes. Awesome. My, yeah, the, what I would, my hope in particular is to make sure that we take this time to be sure that you understand the design document from the top to bottom um, so that you have everything you need to get through a review. Uh, does that sound good? That does sound good, yes. All right. Um, so it, this is a short document, It's and it's, uh, it's mostly abstract. I've made it a little bit more concrete to help um, uh, guide understanding of what it is. Uh, the terms that we've settled on at the moment are um, formula, uh, value, and provide. So the idea is that the endo endo daemon keeps a whole uh, uh, a, some persistent state. the The persistent state between runs of the endo daemon of, of two kinds: immutable data in a content address store, um, and powers, or that is to say, values that get persisted between restart starts by using by storing the formula necessary to reconstruct the value. The purpose of Endo is to be a sort a user agent for capabilities. Um, and uh, so Endo serves as a sort of mediator between confined and unconfined programs uh, for the purposes of uh, <laughs> confined unconfined programs and uh, peers for the purposes of um, creating an uh, object capability reference graph in a distributed way. Yeah, and let, let, let me just bring to everyone else's attention as well, the focus that I'm going to have in mind as, as you go through this, uh, which is uh, the thing that's unusual about um, the architecture that uh, Chris will be explaining uh, is that uh, this system is not based on um, orthogonal persistence or even manual persistence in a conventional sense uh, in that it's not persisting the references to powers. It's persisting these formulas for um, reobtaining the, the authority represented by a power that had been held and on re-executing the formula, you're not necessarily getting the same object. You're just, the intention is that you're getting uh, an object that's providing equivalent enough power. Is that a fair summary, Chris? Yes, it is, absolutely. Yeah, yeah um, and it would be, uh, uh, to characterize that further, if you're connecting to an endo daemon over CAPTP, the expectation is that um, is to have a sort of similar experience with regard to identity. 
as what would occur if you disconnected and reconnected at, in, in the absence of three-party handoff. Um, and you would, you would get an, uh, an equivalent but not identical capability on the subsequent connection. Uh, well, on, on CAPT, CAPTP isn't. I'm, I'm confused. If uh, supposing that you're imp supposing that you're just using CAPTP to connect okay. a couple of endo peers, uh -huh. uh, having one endo peer restart uh, would cause that connection to be lost, and then that connection could be reestablished. The expectation is that when you did that, you would get a new object that would refer to. Would, that would refer to an equivalent, it, you would get an equivalent reference from reconnecting, but it wouldn't be identical. Uh, in the context of, um, in the context of a swing set that restart, um, the you know at a certain level of I suppose we're, we're I suppose all of this is about and what level of abstraction is it the same thing and what level of abstraction is it a different thing, but the okay um, yes yeah yeah so at, so that's that's to say at the eventual send layer of abstraction this is coherent. Um, and then there's an, a, a, at the, a layer above this for the orthogon for, uh, uh, communication between orthogonally persistent worker vats, um, on top of this would provide stronger guarantees of identity, um, uh, across restarts, right? So if you had, a, if you built two workers, if, if you had two peers and they both built swing sets, and those swing sets were in, uh, communicating with each other, then you would get identical objects. Okay. That, that was the, the case I was concerned about. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is, this is supposed to be, um, uh, the, the intention is to build the substrate on which the next layer can be built. I'm still, uh, I'm still, I'm still, I mean, I mean, I know I'm jumping ahead, but I just, I, I, as, as you said, it's important for me to have this straight. Uh, it still seems to me that even when the when the things communicating are not orthogonally persistent swing set vats, there's still an important layer of abstraction difference, which is CAPTP doesn't know about human readable names. It knows about object references and sealess indices. And reconnecting sealess indices seems like it's inherently a lower level of abstraction and uh, identity preserving at a lower level of abstraction. Identity preserving, the, identity then, preserving in the context of a connection, right? Yes. And whereas formulas and pet names are much more, you know, the, the, the application programmer uh, really has to reason about the fact that the the object connected to might be different. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and they also and the API designer has to also take into account that connections can be lost and restored. Um, I expect that that's going to force um, it's going to force things that at the swing set layer would just be values to be like streams of values. Uh, representing um, connectivity events, essentially, right? Uh, so the, the thing that I'm expecting in particular is that if you have a plugin that has been granted the authority to interact with a browser extension, for example, um, in the swing set layer of abstraction, that would simply be a reference to the powerful object provided by the, the extension, right? Um, 
at this layer of abstraction, it'll be necessary for that to be represented as a stream, um, a stream of uh, that powerful object um, in order to account for the fact that it will go away occasionally and be restored occasionally. Like if the extension is opened, that's going to correspond to a CAPTP connection. And then when that tab is closed, that you will lose that connection. And um, and then if you were to reopen the extension, that would reestablish a new connection. Each of these things would need to essentially communicate the new power bearing, new powerful object of, for the extension to the plugin that's interacting with it, um, essentially replacing the previous value. So pub sub turns out to be really useful at this layer for that purpose. Yeah. Um, right. Which all the more reason that eventually we're going to need, eventually we're going to need to have canonical APIs for pub sub to make much more progress on this. Um, and at the moment we're kind of um, uh, waiting for things to converge before we can do that um, between Agoric SDK and Endo. And that comes in the form of moving some code that exists already in Agoric SDK uh, into the Endo repository and aligning it. Um, yeah. So uh, let's see. Uh, what what is the uh, we we've been over this in abstract before, Mark? What is the most murky in your opinion? Where where did where did I lose you? Uh, oof, um, you know I no longer remember. Oh yes, I do remember. Uh, yeah, you did clarify it in a brief message, but going through, but but keeping that in mind as you explained to all of us, uh, would probably be good. Which is, um there seem to be two pet namespaces, both of which came from the user. Um, and I did not understand that and I didn't understand the relationship between them. Yes, okay. Um, so the, uh, let me let me see, Do I explain, um, there's a pair of objects that are, really intrinsic to this design. One of them is uh, a powers object and the other is an inbox. And they both have pet namespaces and they're separate pet namespaces and serve different purposes. But from the purpose, from the view of an endo garbage collector, they are equivalent. Um, they all retain formula trees. Uh, they, 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 they're all roots of the endo formula graph. Uh, or not roots, like the, the users, pardon. The users' pet names are the roots of the formula graph or refer to the roots of the formula graph. Um, they may in turn refer to, um, to inboxes or uh, and the inboxes then can refer to um, their own pet name namespace. So underlying an inbox power box pair, uh, yeah, and I hesitate to call it a power box because Mark clarified and I've included a reference to what a power box is. Uh, Endo is a power box. <laughs> um, and the uh, it's just convenient that inbox and power box rhyme for the purposes of construction. <laughs> uh, but it's it's uh yeah so i'm i'm calling it a powers object i'd like to call it a power box object for the rhyme but that doesn't matter <laughs> um so the idea is that one side of a connection of some kind um holds the inbox and can respond to requests for powers and then the powers can be held by the uh the opposing party who can use that to send requests to the inbox um and uh the the pattern this this pattern turns out to be very very useful for one it represents the relationship between peers very well right so if you want to uh, if you established a connection to another peer for the purpose of chatting with them for example 
um, or sharing powers with them, it would uh, you would hold an inbox and send them a reference to your to their corresponding power box, um, and they would do the same in reverse, which makes them which makes it tempting to make inbox and power box symmetric, um, like literally implement the same type, and that's up for open discussion. But essentially, um, uh, a, a simplex inbox power box pair are sufficient for the preliminary design um can we can we name the the two peers that are communicating alice and bob sure yes and then, and then every pet name the reason pet names have human meaningful names is supposed to be meaningful to some human so in the scenario um uh, for both sides of the um you know uh is keeping track of is the name intended to be meaningful to Alice or is it name intended to be meaningful to Bob? Right. Um, so in an interaction between an, uh, if Alice is holding an inbox and gives Bob the corresponding power box, the inbox has pet names that are meaningful to Alice. The power object has, uh, has similarly in a completely separate namespace has names that are relevant to Bob. But those names were determined by Alice? No, the names determined, the names, um, no, they're not. Uh, Alice has names that Alice has chosen. Bob gets names that Bob has chosen. Okay, good. The way that looks is uh, in this second snippet right here, um, uh, supposing that Bob is holding the powers object, um, Bob makes a request for a file. Please pardon the missing quote, and then uh, and then Bob chooses the name file name, right? And that that pet name's purpose is for reestablishing connectivity. Okay. So if Bob makes a request for the same pet name file name again. If they have been previously granted, if they've been previously granted access to a particular formula, it would uh, the um, the value would be given the pet name file name for Bob. Does that make sense? Uh, I I don't know yet. Um, uh, uh, probably uh, uh, everyone else as well could probably just use more context. So maybe starting earlier in the explanation, sorry for having jumped you forward. No, no, this is great. I, oh, uh, the, does anybody else have questions that they need answered in order to participate in the conversation though? Uh, this'll, this will be relevant to people writing endo applications so i really i really do want to make sure that everybody's caught up to this point uh, i'm yeah. still trying to just uh uh just get a little bit more clarity behind uh inbox and powers and inbox and, and how they really yeah just uh how they, uh, yeah, how they relate and are, yeah, mm -hmm. di differ. Yeah, uh, the inbox, yeah, the inbox API is at the, in in the simplest form of the design. The inbox API uh, provides a requests method that allows the holder of the inbox to um, enumerate, resolve, or reject powers. That have been requested by the, uh, the by their so if Alice is holding an inbox, the inbox allows Alice to make decisions about requests that or, or about uh, about requests uh, it, to have a conversation with the party on the other side. In this case, Bob, right? Um, and that conversation can come in the form of sending references, um, or uh, uh, or or receiving references from the uh, from the uh, from Bob. Um, and currently the API consists ex in exclusively of a requests method. Um, it could also have a send method. Um, 
which which would be some similar to chat, right? So you'd be able to say, send um, a, a message saying, hey, would you like to play a game? And then sending a reference to the game. Okay, so you're actually sending a message to Alice's inbox. Um, Alice is... Bob, yeah, Bob, yeah, Bob yeah. is actually sending, he's not sending messages. Okay. I didn't know if that was going on through the powers. Yeah. 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 The power, the power box gives Bob oh. the ability to send requests or powers to Alice. Okay. And holding the inbox gives Alice the power to respond to those requests. Okay. Right. And uh, as and because the power box and inbox are both pet name APIs, um, resolution, for example, is not in terms of an, uh, of a reference to a value. It's in ref it's it's through a pet name, right? So Alice has a bag of pet names. Bob has a bag of pet names. They use those names to communicate with each other through the power inbox communication channel, and this. This layer of abstraction talking about things through their pet names allows um, allows Endo to re reconnect those objects if Endo restarts. Do we um, uh, let's let's extend this into the standard Granovetter example? Sure. Of the thing that um, uh, so first of all, I'm going to re reverse the roles of Alice and Bob here in order to get to the standard example that um, uh, Alice is sending a message to Bob or making a request to Bob in which Alice is sending to Bob a reference to the object that Alice knows as Carol. So in this case, in, the, uh, in this form formulation, Alice is holding a power box, right? Okay. Um, no, no, let's, uh, let's turn it around again, Mark. Okay. Uh, suppose that Alice is holding it. So there's, there's an inversion of control happening on the canonical example. Uh, okay. in this case, let's consider the case where Alice is holding in, uh, Alice is holding a power box, right? Bob is holding the corresponding inbox. Uh -huh. Alice sends a request to Bob for, for Carol, and and Alice chooses the name Carol locally. So she would so Alice would be in a position where she says, uh, hey Bob, I want Carol, and I'm choosing the pet name Carol for whatever. Oh, okay. You so, okay. So the second argument, the first argument to request the quote, a file unquote, what names, what is that? That is a description that would be presented to Bob for what Alice wants. And it's, and, and and it's, that's a, human, it's, it's a combination of a human and computer readable description of the, the schema of which will need to evolve. Okay, but it's not a pet name. It's not a pet name, no. The first argument is not a pet name. It is serialized and sent to Bob verbatim. The second is a pet name, which is withheld close, which. Okay, so request means, give me the thing that the first argument describes in some human readable, but not subjective language. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to subjectively bind it to file name in my own pet namespace. And that is not visible to Bob. That's correct. So the powers there is not an object exported by Bob, because if it were, then Bob would see the name file name. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, this is a, 
the, the inbox and power box are closely held by Alice in this case. Um, and, uh, oh, wait, wait, it's Alice in, no, in this case, Bob is closely holding, is locally holding um, the inbox and power box. And it's- sorry, yeah. lo I'm sorry, local to Bob? Yes, local to Bob. Bob is holding, uh, is uh, constructs and holds locally an inbox and power box and sends Alice a reference to the power box. So the power is on the line that's highlighted here. The power no. is, is an object exported by Bob? No, no, it's a, pardon. Let me, let me think this through. We haven't done peer to peer yet. Mostly, this is currently only implemented in the relationship between um, an application and the user, which is a similar authority. It's a similar relationship where Alice and in in which case both both sides are on the same machine, um, but in separate workers. The so in the peer to peer arrangement. Um, separate mutually suspicious workers are, are should be adequate. They should have raise all the same issues as separate. Yeah, issues. yeah, yeah. They should, uh, uh, except of course. Mm, except end. So endo is mediating in that case, right? Um, the mediator in the case of the distributed system is a pair of endos. So. In order to stretch this between a couple of endos, it's like I think it's likely that um, that this gets proxied a couple of ways. Uh, I have not adequately thought through the peer-to-peer -peer arrangement. Okay. Uh, uh, so it sounds it seems like the peer-to-peer -peer arrangement. So if endo is media, can we say endo is media? in the multiple workers on a single machine uh, is the powers object that Alice is uh, mentioning on the highlighted line, is that an object exported to Alice by Endo rather than exported to Alice by Bob? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, so the in that case the endo um, is sort of fun, has the same kind of role as the swing set kernel among its vats, which is it's a mutually trusted intermediary and can therefore bring about things that can be brought about when everyone's relying on a mutually trusted intermediary. Right. So the peer-to-peer -peer case is definitely the case that I would need to examine in detail to understand this design because that's where it's a purely mutual suspicion case where there's no there's there's no single mutually trusted intermediary yeah so what i think that that means is that oh i see that there's a question in chat i haven't looked at chat uh yeah with a typo as always the word jump oh, Q. yeah uh uh, the, the, you, you are correct, Sala. So uh, another, just one other question that follows with that, when does the pet name become uh, a pet name when the request is for fulfilled or when it's made? I, I'm sorry, can you ask that again? So uh, in, in the um, line where you're making the request with the two variables, the pet name is the second argument. Mm -hmm. When does that become set as a pet name? Um, yeah. When uh, it's fulfilled or when it's requested? When it's requested. Okay. Yeah, that gets that gets tracked immediately. It's it's uh, a, yeah yeah uh, it's essentially request is essentially a function that is memoized on the pet name. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. And, and in fact, if a subsequent request. If 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 the request gets if if you make multiple requests, only the first request's um, subjective description, not subjective, but uh, uh, 
Well, only the, the description of the power that's requested only gets serialized the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. The, okay, so uh, to let, let, let's riff, Mark, on um, what this looks like stretching it over a peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, right. My expectation is that Endo would continue to mediate a pair of inbox and power and powers, um, but then uh, when transported over the connection. Um, the pet names would need to get translated to a serializable um, mutual reference that probably means translating, uh, translating the pet name to the underlying um, formula identifier over the wire. So presumably Alice and Bob's endos would talk to each other in terms of formula identifiers and not in terms of pet names. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is to say that supposing that we have an arrangement with Alice and Bob and I, and at this point it is definitely time to draw a picture, <laughs> which I'm not equipped for at the moment, but uh, so Alice and Bob, so Alice and Bob, so Bob in, and we're talking about the original, the canonical Granovetter diagram. So, uh, uh, Alice is requesting a reference to Carol from Bob. Uh, Alice and Bob and Carol all have endos representing them in this, in this network. Uh, -huh. uh -huh. Alice and Bob in this case. Okay. And so Bob is holding the powers side of a inbox power box pair. Uh -huh. uh, and when Bob sends a request, a pet named request to, mm, oh wait, no, 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 no. This is the, yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. Bob is holding the power box and is requesting a reference to Carol, requesting that Alice grant a reference to Carol. Um, they express, Bob expresses that they want a Carol reference and assign Carol as their Bob. Uh, let's call it Bob's Carol as the pet name. Um, okay. And that will create a formula in Bob's endo with a UUID or some equivalent, possibly larger, some even some sufficiently unique identifier for uh, the universe. <laughs> regardless of whether it's literally a UUID. Um, and uh, and then we'll record that formula locally and uh, and, and that will give it, and, and therefore it will have a corresponding identifier, uh, a formula identifier, right? Okay, so, so in terms of Zuko's triangle, the formula is a key or uh, rather than a name. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, that will be forwarded. Uh, that request will be forwarded by Bob's endo to Alice's endo. Um, Alice's endo will receive that request and uh, write a corresponding formula locally. Um, and uh, whether it's the same or different UUID is probably relevant for certain kinds of attacks. <laughs> I'm going to say that it creates its own UUID for that formula and refers to Bob's formula as Bob, uh, as, as, uh, um, yeah, there would be, so Alice would need to have a separate store for the mapping from uh, for, for all of Bob's identifiers that that Alice takes for granted, but in the scope of being in a uh, in in collab in communication with Bob, um, so Bob doesn't get to choose Alice's identifiers essentially, um, 
And so then Alice's endo forwards that request to Alice's inbox. Um, Alice's inbox then uh, produces an iteration, the an Alice or Alice can can then receives an object with the ability to resolve or reject that particular um, request with one of Alice's pet names, right? So Alice then chooses to resolve um, uh, to resolve. Now there's a there's an error here. There's a second argument with the actual value. Uh, oh no, there isn't. The uh, Alice Alice receives the request from Bob and then decides that she wants to grant the ac access to her her notion of who Carol is. So, so Alice uses the pet name Carol uh, Alice's Carol to resolve this request. That can gets translated to a local formula identifier, a, a Alice's uh, formula identifier, and then. Alice's endo translates Alice's identifier to Bob's identifier um, and then sends a message saying that your identifier, Bob, uh, uh, Bob's identifier for Carol should be resolved to Carol, uh, to Alice's identifier for Carol. Um, and that sense gets sent back to Bob and ad nauseum. Is that, is that clear? No. Before I try, I think I think that there's enough. We're juggling enough balls that no matter how clearly you verbally explain it, uh, I'm just not going to get it during the verbal explanation. Okay, so what that means is that I think that means that for you to have a full reckoning of this design. I need to add more content to describe peer-to-peer -peer relationships, and uh, and fully uh, and it's that's probably a, a succeeding section since we don't want to overload the complexity up front. Yeah. Uh, do you know? Do you know the the narrative style that I use at eWrites.org when I walk through, for example, three-party handoff? Talk me I mean, through. I've seen it, but I don't know what the intention is behind it. Okay, it's basically like what you like what, like what we were just doing verbally, where we're very we have a very very specific concrete example, with you know Alice, Bob, and Carol on three separate machines or, or whatever, mm -hmm. and you know just for everything that could be parameterized or abstracted, we just make it concrete to just have a completely concrete example, and then just walk through step by step what happens. Yeah, um, and where it's as, happening. Yeah, and where it's happening, um, and uh, when possible, say something about um, you know what the consequences of whose misbehavior of you know what what Alice's risks to Bob's misbehavior and vice versa is. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a all right, cool. I've got clear next steps. Um. I'm tempted to ask if you can review this design just in uh, just in the context of local uh, of the local behavior, so that I can follow up in another pull request that extends it to talk about the um, peer to peer behavior. So, uh, uh, I can try. Uh, I will try. Um, uh, I'm. Because your local scenario gives you the out or, uh, of having a mutually trusted third party, I'm concerned that all of the questions that I'm trying to resolve as I read through it, I won't be able to resolve because there's, there, because there's a globally mutually trusted third party. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so which is to say that the, 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 the local case is not interesting. Um, yeah, I should run through the end. I should probably also uh, take a, a pass at writing this in the narrative style that you describe, or at least adding some content to that. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll send you a link to the, actually, let me, let me find the link and send it to the chat right now. 
to the an example of the narrative style and he writes that arc. Uh, it's worth noting that this design uh, has drifted somewhat from the implementation, and I'm not quite sure what I want to do going forward, considering that the stack is already pretty teeter-tottery. Um, my, uh, my hope is that I can land something and then improve upon it and make it and realign it with this design. Um, but that's a, that's a conversation that I need to have with my reviewers. Um, Mark, can I sign you up as an endo reviewer? Sure. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, all right. I would, be, I would be shocked if you didn't. Okay. Well, I've been, so far, I've been trying to, uh, steal as much time from Dan Connolly as possible in order to keep your hands free. Um, I, but I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, uh, I'll make sure to add you to the whole stack. Um, in any case, I did, I did paste in the, narrative style explanation of three-party handoff from eWrites.org into the chat. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, and go ahead and click on that Aligns First Frame link right there. And then ah. click, click on each graphic. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> the, the, it's the flip card animation. So you can read that you so the, uh, so you can read this. I'm not asking you to do this weird, weird graphic trick. I'm just showing up. You can read this page just by scrolling in sort of nor normal narrative, following the text on the left, or you can do the graphic by just clicking the successive frames on the right. That's clever. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Situation, yeah. Design, uh, yeah. Presentations of equivalent fidelity have been achieved at much greater cost. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, this was done in old HTML3 or something. There's no JavaScript on this page. All right. Uh, I think that I've got everything I need to make progress. Um, I'll, uh, let's open for questions. Yeah, I just had one one question about um, separating out the pet name, make pet name. I, I wrote that example in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, I, it just seems to me that, um, you know, they're kind of like separate things that you're doing with, with the second parameter. Um, I don't know if the design allows, you know, like if the return value is what could be passed or not. But I wonder if this is a style that could be useful. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, make a pet name, let's call that set. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, definitely not going to argue about what to call the function at this point. This also gives us an opportunity to have something named pet store. I'm always a big fan of. <laughs> <laughs> pet store. That never occurred to me before. <laughs> it was right there. Oh, man. Uh, it... <laughs> At Uber, we uh, I I was responsible for a tool for managing all of the IDL files, and um, and at the time, all of our IDL was in a language called Thrift. I think you guys can tell where this is going, um, but uh, <laughs> better heads prevailed, and we ended up just calling it IDL in anticipation that we would have other IDL formats. But I'm still sad. Go, go ahead and give a punchline. I didn't quite jump there. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. So I, if if I'd had my druthers, it would have been called the thrift store. Wow. Got it. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyhow, uh, the um. So if we had pet store, that would mean that I'd have to have a a weak map weak map that is a reverse lookup of any value um, to the corresponding formula. Um, 
it is certainly a valid design. I might already have to do that. I don't recall <laughs> uh, whether the implementation required that, but it certainly does need a reverse look lookup mechanism. So you can take an object and say, uh, what are my pet names for this? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it, it it is possible that a pet store abstraction would uh, uh, would be in in store, if you will. I guess that would look like inbox and powerbox would both have set methods, and uh, the the request. Mm. Okay, no. So the reason why it's necessary. So, so there's an optimization in play. Um, sometimes when you make a request, it's intentionally ephemeral. And sometimes when you make a request, it's intended to be renewable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently using the second argument as an indicator of mm -hmm. whether it needs to be retained or not. Mm -hmm. um, so basically overloading the behavior of request, depending on whether you want to capture the result, resulting formula. Um, it is certainly reasonable to construct a formula for every request and then decide later whether to associate the formula with a pet name, um, assuming some, making some, making some assumptions about the transactionality and where the garbage collector can interleave. Um, I think that this, I think that the API I'm proposing is safer in terms of uh, ensuring that the garbage collector does not have an opportunity to throw away the formulas before you retain the pet name. Um, on that basis, I think I'm inclined to keep it, but at least now we can, um, at least now I have a, a reason to that I can communicate for why. Is, is that satisfying, Sala? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think it, it helps convey with contrast um, more about the design for, you know, for, for different people to kind of um, grasp it. So yeah, I'll, I'll try to remember to write that down. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, it is certainly possible that there would, there, there is certainly needs to be a weak map from arbitrary value or promise at least to the corresponding formula for obtaining it. Um, specifically for reverse lookup. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the resolution, the promise resolution uh, graph. That is to what? say a promise a promise for an eref where we know the eref's corresponding formula would not we would not be able to look up uh the formula for the other for for the wrapping promise well the yeah i mean promises on purpose have no um meaningful identity it's only their fulfillment that potentially has a meaningful identity yeah so so I guess it's useful in this case that we're very deliberately distinguishing an eventual reference from a promise. Um, well, right. Yeah. Pre pre presences are eventual reference are effectively eventual references with identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a weak map. Uh, uh, such a weak map. Uh, well. A weak yes. store, a weak, so I think what you probably want is a weak store. A weak store already um, uh, uh, has the, the, the restriction that uh, a promise cannot be a key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trick is that when I memoize, I have to memoize. So I think that that just means that, I think what I'm going for is that I need to have separate tables for memoization and and uh, and reverse lookup, right? Because I need to memoize the request function based off of, um, oh no, that's memoized based off of the pet name anyway. That's not, yeah, it's, it is definitely distinct. You would use one table to look up the, um, the, the promise for the pet name 
and that would be what the request function would be memoized off of and um and then separately when it gets resolved we would um capture uh the present the, the, the we would capture the uh, a mapping from the presence to the corresponding formula yeah so so try to do anytime you're you're thinking of reaching for a map or a weak map try using a store or a weak store uh, are those available at my level of abstraction uh they're in uh they're um no they're not fuck um they will be but they're not yet okay well, I will look forward to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the the final the fi the final two things on my roadmap, my you know sort of personal roadmap for migrating from uh, Agoric SDK to Endo is store and zone, where where zone itself gets split up into the 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 zone that it's that's at the same level as store and exo um, that doesn't know about virtual and durable and What's then the there's uh, Michael it's the notion of where objects are allocated or where their their state lives so um, you can have a zone that's just a heap in which case that's normal JavaScript or you can have a zone that's virtual in which case uh, object innards get paged out from time to time, mm -hmm. and then you can have a zone that's uh, that's durable. In which case, uh, they're say between that incarnations. Okay. Um, they interact well with exo objects and stores. So, yeah. So in just the same way that that Endo defines the exo, and um, you know the the exo level that's defined to be virtualizable, but only provides a heap implementation of exos. In the same way, the store that's currently in Agoric SDK only provides heap implementation of stores that defines the types so that they can, so that the rest of Agoric SDK can provide virtual and durable forms. Uh, store would move into uh, endo, and then zone would be split up into the part that defines all of the virtualizable types, but only provides a heap implementation, that would be what's in endo. And then what would remain in Oragoric SDK are the, is the uh, virtual and durable. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Virtual yep. and durable, exactly. Yeah, okay, cool. So there's a zone interface that has a couple of implementations. Awesome. Uh, at least a couple. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, we have exactly one minute, Michael. Do you want to like riff with me on naming for publishers and subscribers? Sure, if you'd like. Um, where where are you? So at the moment? we're already using publisher, subscriber, publication, subscription in Agoric SDK notifiers. So mm -hmm. I kind of would would like to avoid confusion by. I see. Not are using they, the same names. Are they used for analogous things or? Mm, no, not really. They, they're objects that have methods on them and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So uh, this is why I was suggesting right. That's right. the topic. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I, I was suggesting disambiguating by calling it facets of the topic and emphasizing that. Because if we have topics that are only kits, then they're not really topics. They're just kits of, kits of facets, right? Mm -hmm. So kits usually contain something, and we could call it a topic kit if we wanted to. So make topic kit uh, returns a pair. Um, that, that pair is a publisher, a, a, a publisher facet, and a subscriber facet, from mm. which you can obtain. Um, a publishing stream or a subscriber stream, which are async iterables. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is this the, the the tragedy is of course that this dissolves into a a nothing conversation if we can just use the verbs publish and subscribe. <laughs> but uh, no, I think publish and subscribe aren't perfect either. 
publish and subscribe are already methods on some of the yeah uh, yeah the packages. Um, yeah that's right um okay mm. i don't like but it the, but how about the, the reason i don't want to use functions like even if far functions work well which they probably do uh is that we probably have different ways of consuming those facets and then we run out of we run out of space for that if we've already committed to having it be a function. I see. We, yeah, we 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 def, we definitely do not have good support yet for far functions. We do have adequate support at the level of eventual send and far, uh, but uh, uh, you not at the level of exos or zones or virtual and durable. So uh, so it it. It'd be good to to continue to avoid far functions in general. Okay. And the thing is, unlike a regular JavaScript function, you can't really add properties to a far function until we have auxiliary data, and that that paints us into a corner as soon as we start using them in our APIs. Yeah, auxiliary data is is hard, much harder than I expected. Even. Well, I don't. I don't think I even. Want, uh, especially in a multi-language uh, uh, CAPTP environment, I don't think that I want to count on ever having auxiliary data or rather functions that have incidental methods. Um, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, living, with, living within the restriction that there are objects with methods is, is fine. Um, it does incidentally mean that Promise kits are not something that you would serialize, but you wouldn't serialize a. You wouldn't serialize a, or pardon, you wouldn't marshal a, um, a a topic either. You would you would separate the two powers and grant them, and then give them to separate parties. It's reasonable to ser serialize promise kits, and that the fact that you can't is a misdesign, and we have an idea for fixing that when we move stuff around. To say that there's a settler object that can both reject and resolve, and so that becomes a presence, and then then the other thing is the promise itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't we actually have an implementation of that somewhere? No, we don't. We've never oh, done it. It's just it's it's been floating around. The type okay. has been there. It was oh, okay. used internally in some of the eventual stand stuff. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, uh, can I uh, publisher facet and subscriber facet? Are those? We don't call things facets usually. Okay. A kid is implicitly facets. Yeah. And we don't want to call them publisher and subscriber, do we? Uh, publisher and subscriber are already used by other stuff. Yeah. I, and we don't want it to say publishable, subscribable. Uh, that was my favorite of all the suggestions so far. Mark, do you like publishable and subscribable? Um, the in general, I like that kind of naming convention. I wish that we had a shorter form of that. Um, uh, but that's it the reason. Uh, yeah, reason why I suggested pub topic and subtopic is because the Gork notifier has already a notion of topics that is a type defined for these particular, particular things. So topics are either are usually in the subscriber side, but if we extended them to the publisher side, then we just call them different facets of the same thing. Yeah, it's just a funny word order thing since they're it's a like I, I would be more comfortable with the names topic subscriber and topic publisher since they both because there's they aren't separate topics. They're well. You do make topic kit. Top topic equals make topic kit. Mm -hmm. Topic dot publisher. Topic dot subscriber. Yeah, that's analogous. Know. I think that that's perfectly analogous. Yeah. So so we already have make topic kit, and it produces an object with publisher and subscriber. Okay. And they refer to equivalent objects. So the what I'm. Uh, is, is it close? We don't to have a make topic kit yet. We just have the subscriber the thing we called subscriber isn't actually a subscriber. It's a topic because mm -hmm. you can't make us. You have to make a subscriber. You can't just inherit the 
default one. And the thing that we call publisher is usually an object with methods, but it shouldn't be. It should actually be just the facet that allows you to publish to the topic. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So I, I've worked closely on this, and that's nuance that is going over my head. I think that whatever is introduced needs to also document vocabulary. So where are we? Like what what what's our what's our current straw person that we're considering? I, is anybody public topic pub and topic sub? So at the entry level, I think I heard make topic kit, which I'm cool with. And then that's going to be an object with two properties. And what are you proposing as the name of those properties? It's going to return an object with two properties. So I think that the current straw person can, under consideration is sub, uh, topic sub and topic pub. Thanks, Tom. Don't we need some kit oriented approach in order to to have the two sides that are tied together? Yeah, we we are proposing. Yeah, to be clear. Uh, I'm proposing functions of uh, of the shape of, of part. I'm, I'm concretely proposing that in the long run, we have make change topic kit or creating a topic with change semantics, right? What are change semantics? Uh, the, 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 each of the topic types varies. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm proposing, and I don't know whether we have alignment on this. I assume we don't. Um, is that there are three, uh, two, importantly, two kinds of topics, and then one for legacy reasons. But the they differ based off of whether the subscriber sees the most uh, the the most recent published value or the next published value um, initially, and whether they're lossy or not. Um, so a change topic is not lossy and only and begins with the next published value. An update topic um, or was an update. Okay, so putting putting the names aside, you're proposing that there are four different make qualified topic kit. I think, I think in practice, two of them are useful, uh, but yes. We can disagree with that, but what matters to me is that the topic kit shape is the same between all of these functions. And I agree. No matter what we, no matter what we propose. Yeah, I agree on that. Um, that the kit, that each of these kit functions returns an object of the same shape. Um, so, and and I think that the current so so we're uh, so we're in agreement that there is a, a a make topic kit family of functions that all return an object of the same shape and we're proposing uh, the current specifically structure, a record, not yeah. a presence. Yes, it returns a record and that rec record contains two facet objects. Currently proposing the names topic pub and topic sub. I think I'd like to say topic publisher, topic topic subscriber. Is that I would I think that would be an improvement. Okay. Like, sure. Yeah, right. if you have the topic this ambiguator, then that's fine with me. Okay. And then then you'd never see the word topic by itself. You'd always do a, a destructure const topic publisher. To topic, to topic publisher and topic subscriber are very long. They are. I mean, they're really, I mean, what, what's the problem with topic pub and topic topic sub? Um, We're calling it thing pop sub. Uh, sorry. <laughs> 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 <No. laughs> That's some adversarial thinking there, Sala. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> Um, may I entertain a digression? Do we have time for a digression? I, I own a domain. 
um, codish, C-O-D-I dot S-H. Um, and my original intention for codish was to create a dictionary that uh, provided a cross-reference for, for terms that tend to refer to the equivalent thing in various standard libraries of various languages um, with the intention of sort of demonstrating that, that we should converge on like a codish language that that uh, that languages in the future would use as the basis for their standard library to increase um, the portability of understanding from one language to another, and um, and it had two modes. One of which, which one of those modes is the mode in which we converge on a language that is understandable based off of where we're starting. And right, so for example, the array or the deck methods would be the familiar push pop shift on shift from Perl and JavaScript. Um, but there was the mis there's also a Chris feeling mischievous mode um, where the names of the deck methods are pish posh pip pop. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> where, where you can figure out which side of the deck it operates on and with, whether it's adding or removing based off of uh, the individual letters of the name. Um, yeah. Anyhow, mm -hmm. uh, so top uh, reminded me of that because tip would be the left side, and by that convention, tip would be the left side of a deck, deck and top would be the other um, fitting pun. Um, it's very lispish, right? Don't they have the convention that you can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the car catter convention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is for like singly linked lists, not decks, but sure. Yeah, I should write my own Lisp just for fun, right? That's what, <laughs> that's that's how people get into Lisp, right? I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that was how I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think of Lisp as the programming language that is not designed for software engineering. It is it is designed for building your own castle, and nobody else's opinions matter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, that crap, that was recorded. Sorry, I'm sorry, I, I'm i sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, okay, so I think that, um, so let's go back to our, so Mark, given that uh, we're looking for a, a balance between brevity and precision, um, uh, I think that uh, I think that Michael, Richard, and I uh, have an appetite for the highly verbose form of topic publisher, topic subscriber. Um, but I think that we could be crawl, we could be brought back to topic pub and topic sub. Um, I'm. I'm okay with this on the notion that there are only pubs and subs and we never have <laughs> it. So there, there's a tension that um, I, uh, there's a conceit in my implementation that doesn't necessarily have to surface. Um, and that is that there are two layers of the streaming system. There's a layer where we're operating in terms of async queues and a layer beneath that in which, uh, or above that in which we're, uh, operating in terms of streams and because they need parallel names my conceit was to use pub and sub at the queue layer and publisher subscriber at the stream layer um, so the if I remember your your stream layer was had bi-directional signals that could be used for back pressure and was also therefore necessarily unicast. Uh, whereas what we're generally looking for here are multicast abstractions that have that uh, multicast abstractions where the consumers have no vulnerability to other consumers. Mm -hmm. And therefore um, there's really not a, any sensible notion of back pressure. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, the the API 
Expo, the implement was so the idea was that um, at the stream layer, regardless of whether there's back pressure, the API of an async iterator is the same that you get a promise. It just may be that that promise is immediately resolved in the case that I see. Yeah. I see. Uh, which is analogous to what we do with promises as well. We don't have separate versions of promises for, um, we don't have separate methods on promise for whether you need the resulting promise or not. Okay. We certainly could. Q did, for what it's worth. <laughs> Done versus then? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I am not suggesting that we. Yeah, cap, um, capital E does as well. Send versus send only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so the, and, yeah, go ahead. The, the issue that I have with pub and sub is that they're uh, valid as abbreviations of very distinct nouns that have already been confused in Agoric SDK. So pub can mean publication or publisher, sub can mean subscription or subscriber, and those are definitely not the same thing. Uh, I would also, I'd, I'd probably be more open if we found, you know, good synonyms that allow us to drop it completely. But thus far that hasn't, none, those have not manifested. Um. There's also, uh, I had I'll leader and that, follower. Yeah. The, the thing is, when you're doing a design conversation like this and considering a long name, the long name sounds much more appealing than it does after the, the thousandth time you type it or try to read it in a piece of code where you're trying to just form readability habits. It just, you know, the, the um, I will never forgive myself for allowing. Um, get own property descriptor into JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. Or or what um, we could do is return a kit that's just an array of two of two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm not um I would, I would much prefer a shorter name, but not so short that it uh creates confusion. Zero and one, it's it's very, very clear. Yeah. So for well, it's infinitely more times than zero, which means you can have lots of subscribers by only one publisher. Right. Okay. So there's also the pub, uh, publication and subscription. Um, I think that there's um, so Richard, I see your point, and also think that there's another like there's there are three stages. You start with a publishable, from which you get a publication onto which you can. <laughs> oh no! Please, <laughs> please no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be known um, to less than one person at any given point in time. And even the people involved in the design uh, won't have it at top of mind. Yeah, it's it's troublesome, though, because um, the things that are returned by the topic kit are not. Um, like the subscribe side is uh, it's it's a subscription maker, not. A sub, uh, uh. <laughs> like, like you start off with a thing from which you can get um, the the subscriber subscription handle. Yeah, you get a handle for a sub, for for the topic from which you can create an async iterator over the subscribed values, and each of those async iterators is um, is linearly independent, if you will. Um, it's not like, uh, think about it, iterator versus iterable. I think that there's a, a, a valid comparison there. Mm -hmm. uh, ah. the, the, the thing that the topic returns is a subscribable in the sense that you get, uh, you can construct mul mul multiple subscriptions from it and each of those subscriptions is modeled as an async iterator. Having the names Having, using the iterable versus iterator as a naming precedent to, to communicate that you're making the corresponding distinction. I like that. That's, that's very nice. Um, so I will motion to have 
a make topic kit family of functions return an object with publishable and subscribable. Is that offensive? I don't know if that symmetry holds. What is a publishable? Uh, it's it's similar, except that in this in the in the publishing case, they are not linearly independent. Um, Sorry, what does linearly independent mean? Meaning that uh, the um, on the publishing side, it means that if you have multiple public, if you have multiple publishers, um, their values get interleaved into the into the conceptual topic order. Um, if you have multiple subscribers of a topic, um, each of them sees uh, sees all of the they they uh, calling next on one subscriber does not have any effect on other subscribers. They each you know, this is this is actually now that you're describing it this way, this is extremely similar to the jewel channel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, that's very interesting. Um, what? It, um, what is the motivation for multiple publishers of the same topic? The only reason we need a publisher object at all is because we need to be able to separate the power. But the, the separation is between the ability to produce values and the ability to consume them, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that to me says there's one publisher and an arbitrary number of subscribers. Yes, that's true. It, it, right. it, it would be valid to construct and a to create uh, a stream for the publisher side immediately, and that publishing that that stream could be shared by multiple parties, um, all of which would effectively hold the power to publish. How does that differ than all of them holding one stream? I'm sorry that that I believe that's what I described. All publishers okay. holding an identical value. Okay, so there's no, there, so that would say there is no meaningful distinction between a publishable and a publisher. Right, but there is a meaningful distinction between a subscribable and a subscriber. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with, with the absence of a symmetry between publish and subscribe because it reflects the reality that there's only one input stream and more than one output stream. And so within the context of stream, the stream library, uh, there's a make um, function. So substitute alternate term as you like. Like there's only, you know, there's one input sequence and m many output sequences, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. Producers and consumers, if you will. Yeah. Source and sync, if only sync were more comprehensible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. But or like spring and sync, <laughs> mm. the, the, the river metaphor, the, or stream metaphor. <laughs> Yeah. The, um, the, but the, the fact the that there, there's a fundamental asymmetry there where yeah. Um, yeah the dual channel terminology for what it's worth was acceptor and distributor yeah yeah i yeah we we've seen this family of names a few times <laughs> certainly <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh yeah like uh reactive uh, the, the reactive programming libraries have similar it, similar terminal, terminology families it might actually be nice that that last one has the uh convenient property that it suggests the fan out shape that like a distributor you you would you would never assume that a distributor has exactly one recipient uh -huh. where, where that is less obvious from some of the other names. Um, may I pose as um, a straw person? Um, the topic kits return an object containing a publisher and subscribable, where the publisher is a stream and the subscribable, subscribable is a an object with a subscribe method that returns a stream. And it's, when you say a stream, do you mean your symmetric thing? Yes. 
please stop having objects with methods that return synchronous stuff because that's fundamentally incompatible with the distributed object model. Uh, what's the... The stream is supposed to be a synchronous near object, right? It's not an async E only object. It would be an E only object. Oh, I suppose. So want... hmm, I suppose it could be. It's fine that we can call things. If you're using it to generate something that you're using as an async iterator, that has to be a near object. Mm -hmm. So you can't get to you can't get to it via e. You have to use a local method to be able to get to it. E will only return you stuff that is separated by a that by a that boundary. Oh. oh, I see. Uh, which is, the distinction is that I need to uh, that subscribe would need to return um, a far wrapper around the async iterator. Yeah, and then you're into world of pain. Isn't it easier just to have an operator that says whatever subscriber is, apply the wrapper, and you get a local async iterator? Um, I think that you need both. I'm reasonably certain we need both. But I don't think we want to speak the async iterable protocol over E. I think they're more efficient distributed mechanisms. There certainly use. are. Yeah, there certainly are. Do we want to implement them at this layer? I think that's kind of the point of the PubSub library. Uh -huh. hey guys, I'm going to drop. OK. So, yeah. That's interesting. Because I didn't need to do that to make this work. Um, no, you didn't. But you're also doing everything synchronously. But it, I'm not. the. Um, you're dealing with near objects. You might await some of them to get them back from E, but it, then E is only providing a convenience to deal with promises. When you're dealing with actual far objects, you can't call methods on them without E. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have to use, uh, I, that's what the, um, the ref iterator, it make, make ref iterator, make iterator ref thing were necessary for um, that the, Oh, OK. So you're using them as the wrappers. What I'm saying is that the wrappers are, why don't we make that part of the pub sub mechanism rather than something that you blew on the side? I see. Because that would give you the ability to alter the implementation underneath mm -hmm. to use a different transport. Yeah. Ah, ah. I mean, you're right. So the, the trouble with going in that direction at this stage is that it is it is definitely necessary for like if if we were to start with the implementation as it is and move in the direction of having an alternate on the wire behavior that would necessitate different API names it wouldn't it wouldn't we couldn't do a, a migration behind the scenes such that subscribe each went from using iterator uh, iterator protocol underneath the hood and moved to using async queue as something at the async queue layer underneath the hood. Um, those would have to have different names. So like having the API be in terms of make ref iterator and make iterator ref, given that the implementation is in terms of streams at the moment makes sense locally especially given that if we did eventually write an implementation that did async queues over CAPTP. Um, well, we already have an implementation that does that, right? Yeah. That's what the Adorkin required is. Right, I see. So the, the point that I'm trying to make is that I don't really care about the implementation on the wire changing, because you're just using it locally from the it's that not. It's not change. locally. It's not local, though. In this case, the CLI. I mean, local to the endo. 
handle it's implementation. Not, it's not even that the CLI is using um is it the CLI is communicating over CAPTP to the daemon so um but what I mean is CLI and daemon are local to the end of toolkit so oh, oh, we, we get so, notifier parts landed before we go to production so I, I see I see and that that that's basically to say that they're versioned concurrently it's unlikely that you would have one version of the CLI and a different version of the daemon it's not impossible I just don't want to paint ourselves into a corner because we've done that several uh, times already. Yeah, 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 I get it. I get it. Do we have rivulets on hydrological stream vocabulary? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, hmm. So, but as, Yeah, so if we proceed with the implementation as it is right now, it isn't actually so much a matter of, uh, there's there's nothing for it that uh, switching to using the notifier framework as the basis for this does involve implementation changes to both the DMN and the CLI. Um, the question is whether, what to do in the interim like how, and how what I'm saying is, if you use the API suggestions that I made, I can make you a pub sub library that conforms to that and doesn't use a separate API. And then you can make the change to the wire protocol whenever you feel like it, as opposed to when you're forced to. I see. And just essentially front loading some of the work of altering the uh, underlying implementation. Um, That's part of why I suggest subscribe stream and publish stream uh -huh. instead of subscribe each, publish each, because then we can have the each methods use a different facet or a different uh, method on the, on the subscribe and the publish stream. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So we get different possible implementations for the wire. Uh, subscribe stream are they actually different they're both returning as async iterators right they return async iterators that's the that's the whole contract of everything here. right and and the difference is not so much whether it's that they're returning async iterators the difference is whether the remote is uh, the remote side is implemented in terms of the iterator protocol that's the distinction so yeah. so subscribe stream would is, is the stream in that case is saying that the remote side is implemented as an eref to an async iterator Whereas each means that it's implemented in terms of an async queue on the wire. It's implemented in subscribe after, hmm. which produces an async queue point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bike shedding, yay. Yeah, yeah. So the naming. Um, so a satisfying intermediate step would be for, okay. Uh, subscribe stream and so concretely what you're proposing is that make topic kit returns an object. And I think that we're in agreement that it should be a, ah, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> the uh the publisher okay, objects they're uh, yeah they're they're they a pair of far objects yes um one of them uh, so we could call it publisher and subscribable is that okay i think that's consistent with your aims where the publisher object directly carries whatever APIs are necessary to interact with it remotely. And the subscriber object produces a method 
has a method like subscribe that returns an object that is used remotely. Is that right? The subscriber object doesn't, don't matter what the contents of that, that presence are. You call an operator on it to produce an yes. executor. Right, right, right. Well, it does matter to the implementation of the subscribe each function and the subscribe stream function, right? Yeah, which is what I did in the. the yeah, testing. okay. All right. So the reason the reason why I don't want publisher to be a singular object mm -hmm. is because I want to leave the door open to have the publish method chosen by caller of a generic topic kit, not one that implements policies on top of itself. Mm -hmm. So I, I want, might want to have publish each or publish latest where back pressure determines whether the history yeah. is kept between publications. Yeah. Notifi yeah, yeah. Notifiers versus subscribers already. Richard, do you find that convincing? Uh, I don't know what that would mean on a single object. What happens if you've got both so, of, like, it, it seems undesirable to allow for both of those to exist concurrently in the same context. That's that's fine to, to have that, but basically if you called, just like with subscribe each and subscribe latest, if you called it on an object that doesn't implement the method you're expecting, then you just get a thrown error. Be a rejection. So if there still were separate constructors for publishers of different policies, at least you'd have a way of indicating what your preference was. But that still be um, true with a singular publisher object. With a singular publisher object, you can't handle it as a stream, is what I'm trying to say. Because it's not a local object necessarily. So well, you still need this operator to try to get at its internals to be able to use there, it. Like a, there would still be the operator, yes. Um, if you still need an operator, then. Yeah, so going going all the way up, we said there's um, a, a make something kit, and that returns you two facets, one for production and one for consumption. The consumption one, uh, the consumption facet itself basically acts as a as a as a maker because you can get multiple distinct consumers. But on the publish side, multiple distinct publishers doesn't make sense because they all still have to coalesce into the same sequence. There is there there's a a topological asymmetry that I think is appropriate to reflect in the API surface area. So, so then should we just have it always be publisher dot or e publisher dot next e publisher dot throw e publisher dot return? I don't think that's what Richard is proposing. I think that it's uh it's like no, I think I think that's fine actually. Like I, I don't like it would be considered in light of alternatives, but I don't think that is an issue to say, you know, do the do the make kit extract off publisher and then invoke in the methods on it that actually add, extend the stream, you know, extend the sequence. The reason Where, why I suggested like the async, the uh, iterator protocol there is because that's what Chris is kind of relying on for his production mechanism. Yeah, I, I mean, or rather that I just, I like this mode. Um, <laughs> I think that it's clarifying anyway, but what streams are in JavaScript and how they how they can be composed in interesting ways. But uh, having I as a, and a thing that I like about the operators is that I can have that opinion while other people continue to have the opinion that it has a different API. Um, what has to be agreed upon, what is necessary to have an agreement on, is what the protocol is over the wire. Um, the, the contract between the operator and the opaque eref and opaque it's like whether it's opaque or not is kind of like yeah whatever the opacity is 
is a, is a, is an intention. Um, and Hiram's law will curse us, but the the idea it's behind forced by types. Yes, that the operator, the idea is to have a bank of operators like subscribe each and publish each or subscribe stream and publish stream, which interact with opaque hand opaque opaque remote handles. Um, the where a publisher and a subscriber are the opaque handle, right? Um, or, or at least we could conceive of it where a publisher and a subscriber are the opaque handles, in which case a consistent design with Richard's aim would be to have a shape like uh, have make topic kit return an object with a publisher, which refers to an opaque handle suitable for operators, and a subscribable which in turn has a subscribe method that returns an opaque handle for subscriber operators. Is that consistent? Why that would be that? consistent, yeah. I don't understand that. Why can't a subscribable implement the opaque method? It certainly could, but the but what what Richard is arguing is that having that level of indirection, moving the moving the subscriber down a level makes clear on the wire that the protocol is creating linearly independent subscriptions. Isn't that what is async iterables do? Iterable versus subscribable. Yes. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> and there's in in JavaScript, part of the reason for the confusion is that all of the built-in iterators are also iterable. But the iterator that you get back from treating them as an iterable is the very reference that you started with and is not linearly independent. So the reason why I'd I'm like to avoid that. The reason why I'm concerned about the subscribe, what I was calling the subscribe topic or the subtopic is a topic in the work notifier land is currently the methods for getting at the underlying publication stream or for getting a current update based on a number. And they can be shared throughout all the subscribers because the subscribers call them and they're operating in their own unique context. So I don't understand why there has to be a subscribe method. What would it do other than return an object that would have those methods on it? That's precisely there's no what additional, there's no other context to add. So why have somebody call subscribe when they could just call subscribe after, or when they could just call subscribe each on the subscribable? This is the subscribable gives you back an async iterable after you call subscribe each on it. Which is to say that, um, which is to say that's that in the op that the operator is capturing some of the state that um, having a subscribe method, um, like it's, it's creating an iterable, so it doesn't capture the state until you call async iterator on it. That's what the subscribe method is: is the async iterator method. Isn't that one of the flavor differentiators that we have under discussion here? At what point the initial value is captured? Yes, and the notion is uh, so. Michael's notion is that if you have if you have a subscribable, that you choose when to start by when you call async iterator or async iterable. Calling Which async. Do immediately. When that would. Well, that, that implies that it's in, that is in, uh, is fundamentally a single flavor, a single kind of behavior. Then that must have been fed in at construction time, because you can't. If you're following the standard protocol, then you don't provide arguments to the invocation of the symbol dot async iterator method. And therefore, why would you need why would you need arguments? 
that I don't understand. Some are lossy, some are not. The, like the flavors of uh, subscriber that we've got that we need. I, my my position is that it is not the consumer that chooses; it's the creator of the topic who chooses the semantics. But again, that's sure. a, and then that's feeding it in at, at construction time. Construction okay. of the topic, not of the topic. topic. Yes. So, in which case, I think we wouldn't even have subscribe latest, subscribe each. It would be pointless. We would have subscribe. Something. Well, we, we would have symbol.async iterator. Oh, I see. Yeah, but symbol.async iterator um, can't give you an async iterator in our semantics. It has, it, it has, um, eventually. If protocol, then we have to call something local in order to build the local object. Yeah. The, That's the, what the whole point of the operators is. Yeah, the operators are. Uh, a function that takes an eventual reference to an iterable and produces an async iterable. Not to an iterable, to something with subscribe each or subscribe yeah. latest. And, yeah. Mostly I'm just trying to describe the kind of decisions that have already been made for work at SDK notified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not to we don't want to innovate on API design when we don't have to. And I, I think it's it's fine to write something that's clearer, but if we're going to be merging our, our use cases and basing one off the other, then- So the, yeah, I, I think that it's it's useful for, for Richard and myself to come to understand the decisions that led to that regardless. Um, and 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 having having different implement and reconciling the differences between different API designs is a great way to discover that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it it sounds workable to to have the one facet with methods for extending the sequence, and to have the other facet have methods for constructing subscribers for for lack of a better word at this point and if that is you know subscribe each and subscribe latest to align with agoric sdk i think that's fine um, symbol.async iterable that we've done that before but moved away from it because we don't want to do symbols on the wire we can't have, don't have to. Yeah. sure and and not having like having having all three um it smells to me so if we have subscribe each and subscribe latest, uh, where any given, e even if it, if we have them where any given implementation is expected to actually uh, support only one or the other, that's fine. And if we had only symbol.async iterator, I think that's also fine, but to have the combination of them seems inappropriate. I'm, I'm inclined to agree that there's a smell in the notifier API in this regard, um, given that the it's not the notifier API technically because notifiers only provide subscribe latest. I'm sorry. Notifiers only support subscribe latest. Pardon, I mean the agoric notifier package, not the notifier okay. class itself. Um, the the smell in the notifier package is that the that the creator of the topic and the consumer of the topic have to use methods that agree. Or, Currently that's expressed by the type of the topic. The type is either in each topic or a latest topic, and you can't mm -hmm. use the methods from one or the other. Mm -hmm. You can't pine them, except if you make a publish kit, in which case you've got support for both. And the only reason you have support for both is because it does actually have all the methods that you need to consume it both ways. I see. Namely, namely it has a way to skip ahead whenever yeah. it comes back to the next yeah. item. And presumably- It also has a way to get all of them. So the smell, the, the smell to be clear is that the that the producer and consumer have to agree on the uh, have to agree on which um, 
which kind of topic it is, because it seems, I think, to Richards and my intuition, and it is likely that we are incorrect, um, that there should be a single operator that can handle either case, regardless of what the topic type is. Um, and that would be the case if the underlying protocol on uh, over eventual send were in terms of an async iterator, as it is in my implementation. Um, if, if, if the implementation is in terms of an async iterator over CAPTP, then there is no need to have a different operator on the consumer side, depending on whether what the semantics of the pub sub are. Whereas my the hunch I'm getting from this conversation, Michael, is that um, that they have to agree because the subscriber has the subscription operator is sufficiently entangled with the underlying wire protocol that it does need to know what type of topic it is. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And the reason why they are separate operators is because we have no back pressure. So somehow the client has to decide, what are we going to do with all these extra values we're receiving? Are we going to discard them and skip ahead? Or are we going to consume every single one of them? And that and at that surface is because you're not, not operating at the layer of an async iterator. It's because, because you're operating at the layer of um, having eventual having async queues on the wire. Uh, well, we also have the get update since, which is like that. So it used to be that notifiers and and um, publications and stuff all exposed async intervals too. And the problem we had was that there was no way to tell by types what you were getting. And basically. And why was it important to know by types what you were getting? Was the back pressure uh, signal? Yeah, so that you would know if your client was going to be filled up by all the chatter, whether it was just going to skip to the latest stuff. OK. With this I, I think I know enough to be convinced that the operators need to that the operators when operating in terms of the async queue protocol need to know that need to co need to collaborate essentially with um with the publisher or or would, would have to collaborate with the topic whereas if the, whereas a single async iterator wrapper would suffice for all kinds of things that are implemented on the wire as async iterator protocol where the assumption is that that's a purely local artifact, the, the actual async iterator that's constructed, or, or am I misunderstanding? Yeah, you're understanding. Yes. Okay. So, um, what I think I I think my understanding is that in order to gracefully migrate from where we are to where we want to be in the implementation of endo um, it's useful to continue using the implementation as it is that's fine um, but to do so in terms of operators that are analogous um, analogous to what we're going to get from endo pub sub maybe someday soon um, so that it's easy to just change subscribe stream to subscribe stream to subscribe the and a suffix that indicates the topic type um and it can and then and it also stands to reason that it's useful for the publisher and subscriber implementation or the publishable and subscribable implementation one or the other or both or Whatever we said, we still haven't settled that issue, but whatever the opaque objects are over the wire that the operators interact with on the publisher side or the subscriber side, um, they can, in my implementation, currently have uh, implement the iterator protocol. And in the future, they could also implement the protocols necessary for these other operators, and that that would be a um, one way. Oh, darn, I lost you.
Yeah, I think his connection. I, 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 yeah, I missed you for a second there. I'm back. Oh, am I still here? Yeah, you're here now. Uh, you were lost there for about five, 10 seconds. Yeah. Michael, can you repeat what you said? Oh, dear. I lost you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I asked to be okay. So I'll repeat what I said. I asked, uh, is, is the, uh, is what I described a coherent idea for how to proceed with pub sub and endo? Uh, yes. And the idea, and, the, and to be clear, the opa the idea is that these opaque handles currently implement the iterator protocol, and then in a later version, they would either implement a different protocol or both the iterator protocol and that new protocol. And in your case, I think all you want to subscribe each. I agree. Or so rather, let's not, let's I, not call I, it subscribe stream. I, I think that I need to call it subscribe stream because it's specifically interacting with the async iterator protocol. Uh, having stream in the name indicates that I'm using the opaque object as an eref to an async iterator, whereas changing the operator name from subscribe stream to subscribe to from subscribe stream to subscribe each indicates that I'm interacting with the uh, the remote opaque object using a different protocol than what it was before. Is that sensible? Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll take your suggestion of of, re, of renaming the subscribe operator to subscribe stream, um, or uh, or or just uh, clarify that I'm using make iterator ref and make ref iterator as those names. I think that that's consistent. Um, that uh, yeah, make yeah, make re make ref iterator. I believe is what your uh, is. The, the function I've implemented that is equivalent to what you're imagining of subscribe stream. Um, that's in general, just a wrapper for creating an async iterator out of an eref for an async iterator. I didn't see how you got that from the pub and sub function. So does that um, give you an iterator? So the, so in order for it to be consistent with your design, I would need the opaque objects provided by the kit to implement the iter be eRefs for the iterator protocol. Um, and just because it's hard to reuse the pub and sub functions, or what would you need? Like what I was suggesting is that you just do the same protocol in the wire as the pub and sub functions use. Remind me what the pub and sub functions uh, see, Zella, thank you for listening, uh, pub, and, pub and sub functions. Which ones are those? The ones you made. Uh, what are they currently named? They're not They're called. They're named pub and sub. On the async queue layer, they were. Yeah, that's where they are. It's before you make the stream. Before you make the stream, you pass in pub or sub results. Oh, those, oh right, because those are the internal details. So why right. not do that on the wire, is what I was trying to understand. Um, as opposed to the iterator protocol. Mm -hmm. Okay. That implies a much more invasive change and also oh, pushes, okay. pushes me in well, the direction of using subscribe each as the name in particular. For clarity, when you say use iterator protocol, you're meaning, you know, remotely invoke a, a method named next? Yes. Okay. But yeah, if if it if it does something differently, the only reason why if it is invasive, then don't worry about it. Richard, I, I want there would be an easy adapter. That's I see. No, I think that no, I don't think it's easy because the stream layer. Um, yeah, the stream layer encapsulates the async queue, and I have not implemented it in a way that exposing the async queue to the wire is easy. Like there's, I I think that. I think that there might be some convergence if the operator, the subscribe stream operator takes up the responsibility of constructing a stream in terms of a differently shaped opaque 
uh, uh, opaque object representing the topic or to uh, opaque object representing the subscription or the subscribable. I st we really we still haven't converged on whether to use subscribable or sub or publish or subscription or subscriber. Um, gosh. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. My my inclination, Michael, is that all of these are internal details that are held between the CLI and the daemon. And that I'd like to land a thing that works and then rewrite it when I have PubSub to rewrite it in terms of, if that's okay with you. Um, I will I will make some motion in the direction that you're suggesting. Um, but I think because I've hidden the implementation away in the daemon, um, that with the exception that I do export from the daemon the make iterator ref and make ref iterator functions as the operators that are analogous to subscribe each, et cetera. Um, I, I think that we're early enough in this project that I can swap all that out without anybody noticing. Okay. The, the only reason I was arguing for something else is that using E keeps you honest. Yeah. And, uh, and, and if there's, to be clear, I am using E. <laughs> On the objects you got back from mm -hmm. the subscriber, uh, how how did you? The CLI, uh, the CLI is using eventual send to talk to the daemon. The daemon provides an eventual ref. So when you call, uh, when you call E. When you eventually send on the endo bootstrap object a um, follow inbox method, what you get is an eref to an async iterator. Um, and then in okay. the CLI side, I um, unwrap the async iterator into an actual async iterator. I, I turn the eventual iterator into an async iterator with an operator analogous to subscribe each um, on the CLI side. Okay. And it's just using the iterator protocol instead of using the underlying async queue protocol that we hope to use um, in when I exchange the implementation for the pub sub. Um, okay, yeah. I, I just found the layering confusing because the the use of the, the use of far implies that you were using e in between those pieces too, but you couldn't have been. Will you actually construct the thing by calling the methods directly in that change topic uh, stuff? You're, con you're constructing the streams at some point. Yes. The streams get uh, streams get constructed in a couple of different places. The um, So what confused me is I thought you were share, I thought you were keeping the streams local and sharing the pieces above that, but you're not sharing the pieces above that, even though they say far on them. Yes, <laughs> and I did not. That's, that's what's confusing. <laughs> I see. I, so I, to be clear, it didn't have far on them in the first version, <laughs> and I responded to your feedback by adding it in order to um, satisfy. I think I I see where we talked past each other now, though. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. It it was not originally necessary for them to be far objects at this layer. Um, In fact, they couldn't be. Uh, because the streams the streams constructors take stuff that's local. That's well, what I was observing. Anyway. Right. The. I yeah. I see. Um, That's OK. Now I understand where you're going with that. Yeah, so, so. right. So the, OK. So as it's written today, when the CLI requests a subscription, the subscription, the topic itself is actually created in the daemon. 
and then it's just bridging the iterator protocol over CAPTP. That's the distinction. And what we would be able to do with PubSub would be to have the subscribable, uh, is essentially for the subscription to live more in the CLI and less in the daemon, um, which would be good, uh, to be clear. Yeah, and the, the main reason is that then you can pipeline a whole bunch more and mm -hmm. not be trapped behind the async iterator. Yes, okay, cool. I think we're on the same page then. The, 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 the implementation as written today is tentative. <laughs> and that it will genuinely be better architected uh, when I think trivially rewritten in, tr in terms of pub sub, but that does require changes on both the CLI side and the um, and the daemon side in order to facilitate that. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that that makes most of the most of the alignment concerns. Um, melt away that this is code that I intend to delete. And we shouldn't spend too much time on this. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to go. All right. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thank and you. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Richard. Thank you.